Hello, welcome back to Rotary Rockets. Today we are doing part six of our series of building our biggest motor ever. So before I get into the changes and the details of this new one, I wanted to cover two comments uh, that we got in our last video that were really good comments. Um, in our last video, in part five, we tried an experiment by adding some baking soda to our fuel mixture to try and slow the, fuel, the burn rate down. Um, if you've watched part five, you'll see that was kind of funny. Uh, it was a terrible failure, and I couldn't really remember where I had read online or seen a video online or something about adding baking soda to the flexi fuel mixture. Um, but uh, somebody commented on that and it triggered my memory that I had seen baking soda being used in this dry fuel mixture uh, for a delay grain. It was not a cooked fuel, it was a dry packed fuel and just for the delay grain uh, to eject the parachute 10-15 seconds later. So clearly when you try to add baking soda to the flexi fuel and cook it, bad. Uh, just adding it into a dry pack mixture, good. So that kind of answered my question in my mind of where I had uh, read about that being a good idea. Not a good idea for our fuel. The second comment that was really good uh, was in regards to us again trying to slow down the burn rate, um, but this was when we just added cornstarch. We substituted a, a percentage of um, the dry mixture in the fuel for straight cornstarch. Um, and that didn't come out very well either, didn't really do what we expected it to do and, and perform the way we expected it to perform, although it wasn't that bad. Um, the comment was just to substitute a 5 or 10% of the powdered sugar only and not do a substitute for the potassium nitrate. And after thinking about how the fuel works uh, and, and what we're trying to accomplish, that really sounded like a good idea. He had also mentioned that he'd done some experiments with that as well. Um, so it sounds like that's a, a good idea, is just to do a 5 or 10% substitution of just the powdered sugar portion of the fuel. So um, today we're not going to be doing anything as far as slowing down the burn rate. We're, we're still trying to perfect this whole nozzle and casing deal. Um, but I'm not really against going back and trying to do a slower burn rate um, if, if we finally get something that works perfect here as far as getting a successful launch with this new motor. So probably something we'll revisit in the future on a future video. Um, so on to what we have today. We're using the same exact casing that we used in um, video number five. So it's that thin wall steel casing with the, um, the threads welded onto the end here and steel bulkhead on the other end. So same exact casing, haven't done anything to that at all. Um, fuel cell is an 18 inch fuel cell with a uh, it's PVC, inch and a half PVC. We've got the flexi fuel already poured in there with a half inch core hole size all the way through. It's a single cell, so not individual Bates cores, just one gigantic Bates core. And it has our little PVC cap that we've custom made and glued onto the top there as well. So these are basically similar or, or basically same components that we've done in previous videos. What we've changed is the nozzle. So this is the nozzle we've been using since the very first uh, motor in this series. It's been with us for videos one through five. Um, it's a nice nozzle. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's very heavy because <laughs> I didn't machine it uh, to very super thin tolerances. And it also didn't really have the convergent, divergent, and orifice size um, that we need going forward with our new design. Um, the original motor had a, a larger diameter um, fuel cell, so we needed a larger diameter um, starting at the um, intake side here, and we also needed a larger orifice to deal with that. So this was a number 32 or 32 60 fourths diameter hole in there, and that's what we've been using all along. I made a new nozzle, got that welded up at the metal shop. Um, I machined it pretty tight as far as tolerances go. It came out very nice, nice thin wall, beautiful convergent and divergent ends, 
And this one drops down to a number 28 nozzle size, so 28 64 So that's four nozzle size drop between the two. Uh, also, because I did machine it a little bit thinner, um, and just made it overall nicer, uh, we have dropped down from 538 grams, which I will tell you is heavy. 538 grams, 315 grams. So significantly lighter. So that's good because the casing already is fairly heavy, although it's not ridiculous. But out of the whole thing, this was most definitely the heaviest out of everything on there. So hopefully we don't have to go back to that uh, with the number 32 nozzle and we can stick with this. If for whatever reason this does explode, uh, there is some extra meat in here. I could put this back on the lathe and increase that from a number 28 up to something larger if we needed to uh, get that orifice size a little bit bigger. But really hoping we get some serious thrust out of that number 28. This ought to be really interesting. So today I'm going to be making another rocket motor nozzle using the lathe. Now I'm going to be starting out with this piece of steel here. This is a two and a half inch diameter by three inch long piece. It's 1018 steel, which is a very common mild steel. Uh, this weighs four and a quarter pounds right now, so this is a very heavy piece of steel. Um, be interesting uh, to see what we get when we're done. I'm going to weigh the final, uh, but we're starting with four and a quarter pounds. Now, the nozzle itself, I used uh, Richard Naka's SRM spreadsheet. I'll put a link down in the description to that. It's a really good spreadsheet uh, for developing solid rocket motors and uh, getting some nozzle designs. It's kind of technical. Um, it's not really something, I think, for beginners, but it is a nice piece of uh, reference piece that I've been using for a long time. Um, I designed the nozzle on there and then I just transposed it here into AutoCAD so that I can follow along a little bit easier with some very detailed dimensions. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Now while I get this chucked up in the lathe, let me just mention this video isn't really meant to be a tutorial for making this nozzle or any other nozzle. It's really going to be more of just a time-lapse type of video. I'm just going to take little shots every so often as the nozzle takes shape. took several hours but it came out fantastic. Just some quick notes uh, on weight. We started out with that uh, piece of steel that was four and a quarter pounds or 1,928 grams. We ended up around a third of a pound or 5.35 ounces which is also 153 grams. So we ended up removing 92% of the steel. So this really is not all that heavy even though it's, it's steel. Uh, the only thing left to do is we need to get a threaded fitting similar to this. We're going to have the welding shop weld that in and that will allow us to thread this nozzle onto our current rocket motor design. A couple of quick notes, uh, this is a 35 degree half angle convergent and a 12 degree half angle divergent. Those are some pretty standard numbers uh, for angles for convergent and divergent in the nozzle industry. And then we have the number 28 
hole in the center, which is 28 64 of an inch. So this will be the nozzle that you'll see on our next motor test. So we are going to get this all put together. We're going to get the nozzle installed, and we're going to put our test stand together and get out and do a ground test. Alright, so 314 pounds of thrust, that's what we were going for, some serious thrust out of this motor, and the casing held up just fine, our new nozzle gave us exactly what we needed, more thrust. So here's the thrust curve that we charted for this motor, and you see we reached 314 pounds of force, it burnt for about one and a quarter seconds, and then it drops off pretty much instantly after that. So we're ready to launch this motor. We're going to be working on building a rocket that can hold this motor because right now none of our rockets can hold a motor this big. So that video should be coming up soon. If you want to see that and get notifications for our videos, go ahead and click the subscribe button and get some notifications when we post stuff. We've got some more stuff coming, some parachute builds, some rocket builds, and as well as some launches. So we'll see you soon on the next one.